Hi, everybody. I'm excited to uh, start this section off with step one. Uh, we went through uh, section one, creating your onboarding plan. Uh, in section two, we talked about connecting and creating sparks with your members, getting social with them, participating and getting them uh, to uh, feel like they have a sense of belonging and uh, reviewing the commitment curve and life cycle. And then there's a bonus if you haven't gotten to that section, if you passed that section or uh, just didn't get to watch that uh, recording of the workshop that we did last month, uh, please uh, check that out. Uh, so this section, we're going to talk in, in this step, step one, we're going to talk about creating your growth plan. Um, we're going to identify recruitment of new members, uh, talk about ambassador programs and retention on your current members. So it's so a lot to cover. I'm going to go through this step by step with you. Uh, so what I've done is I've pulled out with um, identifying the tools and intentions and how you can take some actions using the calm method here. So the first uh, bullet point I have here is clarity. Um, to gain clarity on the best way to recruit your members, you'll want to review your current onboarding process. So we've discussed that in section two. And if you've identified the best way of your onboarding and your plan, you've got that set up, you wanna just revisit that and see how is that working? What are your members saying? Are they sharing feedback with you from that onboarding experience? Um, so getting information from them, uh, just, just to gain clarity around what is working with your current model of recruiting and onboarding new members. Then we're going to talk about awareness. So how can you bring new members into your community? Let's talk about maybe utilizing current social media connections that you have, identifying um, potential new members within your networks. Uh, consider spending time on other communities that focus on topics that you also find interesting, in which you spend time inside. You, and in addition, you are also talking about those topics in your own network. Uh, maybe start jumping on some clubhouse chats, start uh, to share more of content on LinkedIn and Instagram, connect with new people on Facebook, maybe tap into the current network you have in other places uh, to create conversations that could lead to inviting them into your network. And then the next area here we're gonna look at is learning. So as a Money Network host, you've got uh, an ambassador program already set up. So if you want to, um, work on asking your members to invite new people, you could take advantage of this ambassador program. And I'm gonna break this down uh, and I'm gonna share my screen, uh, show you a little bit about how I set up my ambassador program really quickly, but I'd like to just give you the differences between a ambassador program and what affiliate programs are. So the difference for me in an ambassador program and an affiliate program is money. You're basically an affiliate program. You're, you're paying people. They get a commission to bring people into your network. Um, the ambassador program is really all about creating an amazing experience that is so inspiring to the members inside your network that they want to share it with other people because they found so much value. So I'm going to jump back here because I wanted to just go and look at some uh, examples for uh, social media. So I'm going to jump over to LinkedIn and I'm just going to show you a couple of things that I've been doing here. And that's just really about creating um, new content. I'm sorry, repurposing, not creating new content, repurposing content, actually. So things that I'm doing inside the Find Come Here community, I'm sharing some of these things um, on top of the fact that I'm doing the podcast and I'm sharing this uh, interview with Thrive Global based on the workshop we did a few months ago. Um, there's other things that I'm doing that I'm sharing all the time that I'm connecting with. I'm liking other people's um, you know, posts. I'm sharing my own posts, I'm commenting on other people's posts. This post had 216 views, and I, I think I credit that mostly to people that I've tagged and people that have shared this. So this one had, um, let's see, 
Yeah, this one had 89 views. Um, there was one I did. Let me see if I can pull it out. Um, that had 216 views. I'm going to keep scrolling here for a second, so bear with me. The comments that I make on other people's, um, that's just giving um, giving me more uh, likability, right? People are getting to know me and like me more when I'm connecting more with them online. Um, so the, LinkedIn is a primary place where I go uh, to connect with others. And one of the things, see, I, this is one thing I just shared recently. I started writing blog posts about what I'm doing with the Calm Guides and then sharing them out with people and then I'm tagging others so that they are seeing that. Um, so this is one way I'm trying to do some outreach around getting new members and interested in the community by just having them uh, get to know who I am a little bit more. And then when they know who I am, then they'll be able to say, oh, Deb is actually somebody that does, you know, community building. And so she could actually help you. But I'm, I'm just, I'm very active on here with just really connecting with messages that people are putting out there. So I just wanted to give you that thought around, this is one example of, um, like I shared uh, an event that was with a client and uh, we, we uh, tagged a bunch of people and she had about 118 views, or I'm sorry, 111 views on that. So there's just, there's just so much potential for um, building, you know, building out things, um, getting more eyeballs on you, what you're doing in the world. So whatever you can do, this post in particular, this is what I was trying to find. So this post in particular had 19 comments and it had, I don't know why it doesn't show the views there. I think I have to go to this post. But it had 19 comments. I think this had something like 4,000 views. It's I don't know why it's not coming up now, but um, just to give you an example that, you know, the more you hear 1,270 views at that point for community building. And I was, I was posting specifically about community building and I was tagging the people that I know that also do community building. So just to give you an, a perspective that this is something that helps you in your growth of, a, you know, of really reaching out and uh, utilizing the network that you already have to connect with people. Because once you uh, have that know, like, and trust factor, they're gonna be more interested in learning what you have to do, uh, what, what you are doing inside your network, as well as what they can do to refer you. So then that goes back, that goes, I'm gonna go back down to the ambassador program. So in the, um, in the Find Calm Here community, I have an ambassador program set up, but I wanted to just show you a little bit more about how you can utilize ambassador programs to your benefit. So if you go into the premium features, is, and this is if you're on the business plan, I believe the ambassador's program is set up for, um, and you go to um, man, the rewards and manage, you can actually customize these um, things. And I actually have in here, if you refer to members, you get a community spotlight. And so I'm working on partnering with people to in the community as members of the community. If you um, bring in members, then you actually get these different benefits. So you can see all these different rewards. And I'm going to go back over to the program here. So bronze level, I believe is two members. Now I've customized this. I actually built my own program, but this is this is where you would set up the ambassador program, just so, so you know. And then in the in the um, community, when you go to these profiles, you'll see like my profile. I have it as a bronze because I it shows you nine people have come in because I've invited them. And the reason it's not a lot more than that. <laughs> 
is because I didn't always use that particular share link. And that share link is the one that is in your set. It's underneath your account. Actually, it's personal settings. And then it's invite. And here is your share link. So if you share that link, that will always then share with you how many members you've referred and how many you need to get to the next level. So I just mentioned the ambassador program because it is a nice way to give a little bit of benefits to your members, something fun, but maybe it's more access to you. Like I have, um, I created in here, let me go to the about section. I think I put it in the FAQ. Do you have an ambassador program? I have that in FAQ. Yeah, you can learn more about the ambassador program here. That link goes to a detail of, and I have a video of the ambassador program in here too, um, turning the ambassador program, ambassador options on the inside the Find Calm Care community. If you um, refer one member, I give you this awesome community badge that I had a, um, a marketing person come up with for me last year. And then, um, Two paid members, you, uh, I'm gonna do an article on you in the Find Calm Here blog and inside the community. Um, so that's the partner spotlight. Strategy sessions, um, I am offering to give a free one hour strategy session, consulting session, Q&A session, whatever you'd like to use that if you refer four members. Um, and then I have here, if you refer for eight members to uh, Find Calm Here, I'm going to go and actually go and do an analysis for you and look at how you can improve your conversions. If you have a free space, you're trying to convert people to a paid space or other ways to create contribution and create a better experience for your members. So that is the, um, the ambassador program that I have set up. So if you have questions around that, let me know. The, um, so I talked about ambassador programs in the learning section. We mentioned about ambassador programs. The motion section is talking about the member journey. In section two, we reviewed um, analytics to see who's participating or not. So you can actually go, and we'll do this too, we'll go to look at the analytics. And I did a video on analytics, which I did put in the community, but I'll go to network settings, premium analytics. So here it tells me how many members are in my community, how many members were referred. It also tells me a little bit about the members, how many are active, how many are new. Um, it tells me how many returned. I have a high return rate on this, it's 82%, so that's pretty good. Contribution rate, 60%. I'm having 60 of you in here um, contributing. That's that's pretty amazing. Member retention rate, 88%. People are staying and they're coming back and they're participating. Um, and then it breaks down by top members. And uh, it, it breaks down that so you can see your most active members. This is just the basic um, analytics. Now you can go to this new um, feature called insights. And I'm not going to go too in depth with this, but I will just share with you um, that this insights area really gets into so much detail around your members, your content. This will give you a really good idea of what's working in your community, what, what maybe isn't working so well. You can see whether most of these people in FindCom here are looking on the desktop. Um, some of them are looking on the iOS uh, and Android. I don't really have anybody that's going on web mobile. Um, so you can see weekly active members is 15. It shows you like along the entire month, the, you know, the ups and downs of when people are coming in. So there's a lot of stats here. And then you can like, these are toggle over things uh, at the top, at the top there's some tabs here that you can actually toggle over and uh, look at this a little bit more specific. So it comes up with a lot of charts and graphs and I'm not really a fan of, <laughs> looking at all these charts and graphs, but just to say that, um, you know, this helps. Here's a member growth. So I'm growing by 11%. That's really great because there was a long time that my community was stagnant. So I'm glad that 
I'm on a path to growth now, which is the goal for me <laughs> when we're talking about goals. Uh, so just to go back to um, identifying the member journey, um, and then we're touching on retention here with just identifying, you can look at those analytics and say, okay, what's working and what's not. Um, and then you also with member interviews, right? Sometimes the timing isn't right, they have to leave, maybe they'll come back. Um, I would definitely recommend reaching out to people when you see they're either not active or you see that they have left, you know, like they're, they left their membership. Um, and just feel, you know, maybe offer a personalized session on, you know, let me, let's chat one-on-one -on -one and, and I can make sure that I can help you if that's something that they're interested in. Maybe it's just a, you know, a time, they've already got what they needed with your network and they're moving on. Um, I've done that recently with communities I've been a part of. I, I, you know, utilized what I needed to for the time and now I'm moving on to other things. So it's just a matter of assessing those things. So um, those are some things through the calm method that I was looking at in reference to your goals and your growth plan. And then I have a worksheet here. <laughs> Yay for worksheets. Uh, and this just breaks out, write out your plan on how to recruit new members below, um, how you'll connect with them, where you'll find them, where you reach out to them, um, what you already know about your current network and how you can leverage that to start cultivating new connections for possible members inside your network. Uh, learning to decide if you wanna do an ambassador program and what other ways you can uh, utilize encouraging members to invite others to your network. And then a motion of writing out the member journey, identifying members you could reach out to that haven't been active or have left so that you can get feedback and maybe bring them back with a personalized message or call. Um, you also want to think about people that are in there and really active because the people who are really active are the ones you want to reach out to for ambassadors and say, hey, I have an ambassador program. I'd really like it if you uh, really like this space here to share this with your friends. Uh, so those are just, uh, that's a worksheet for you. I have a example here. The example goes over um, what I just generalized as a basic um, growth plan for myself. I've identified that members receive a personalized message and or email when they join uh, with a video to help guide them uh, with what to do inside the network. I've received feedback from members that that video and personalized welcome message allowed them to feel welcomed. From this experience, I know that my members relate to personalization and I can implement this into my outreach for two potential members. So here's the how, where, when, and why. So how I'll reach out, personal invitation, connecting over a video call, sending them an email, um, or inviting them um, to learn more about what I'm doing. Uh, that's how I'm going to do that. Where I'm going to do that, I just had shown you a little bit of LinkedIn and I see a lot of possibilities there. Clubhouse is another cool place. I'm not gonna dive into that today, but I think uh, Clubhouse is a really other cool place to kind of peek in and check out and see if that's something you'd be interested in participating in. The when, I have a, a scheduled Monday afternoons. Uh, that's the best time for me to connect with new people, to cultivate relationships. It just works well in my schedule and I can like plan out the week based on, you know, reaching out to people. Cause then maybe if I reach out to somebody and they're like, yes, let's set up a call for Tuesday or Wednesday, then, you know, then I have the whole week to schedule in and get people on a call within that week too. That's another benefit to uh, saying I'm gonna reach out on Mondays. Um, why, why am I doing this? Well, I wanna grow my membership. Uh, my goal right now, Currently is 50 members by the end of 2021. In order to do this, I'll need to improve my outreach. Uh, to reach the goal, I currently have 25 members, 26 members, something like that, inside my network now. So to double my membership, I need to invite 10 potential members per month over the next four months. And then hopefully of those invitations, five to six people would actually join and hopefully more, right, to hit my goal of 50. I don't know that 50 is realistic. We're going to go into goal setting next. So maybe I might be addressing this after the fact that I'm like, oh, maybe that's not realistic. But um, I was going to challenge you at the end here, post your growth plan in the Find Calm Here community so we can see how you've created your plan. Uh, hopefully that'll inspire other people. I know this video was a little long, uh, longer than usually my videos are, but there was a lot of information in this uh, step. So I just wanted to make sure I'm really clear and go over it. If you have questions, please post them in the um, step one comments area 
uh, and tag me so that I see that. Okay. Have a great day.